Have you ever had a traumatic experience? As much as it can pain you to remember such an event, there are unique aspects to it that only you can recall. And I don't just mean what happened. I mean the way things might have looked from your perspective, what you were thinking in the moment, the chills coursing through you, or the sensations in your fingers or toes. I'm describing a few effects and an even greater number of possibilities for a limitless number of experiences. It's the often overlooked pieces that are hardest to forget. For director Elise Winokur and her near-death experience after giving birth, it was the sounds. The whirring of machines around her, the vague beeping of the monitors, and the indistinct hum of devices ensuring her survival. She described her memory of her trauma being these noises, which is a very personal recollection of such an event. Certain groups of people are more exposed to traumatic and near-death situations. Soldiers are a perfect example of this. I'm not talking about the vast majority of service members who this doesn't apply to, but the ones who have had direct involvement in combat operations or real exposure to threats. The type of exposure, whether once or continuous, that could lead to a disorder. It's a serious subject that makes up the foundation of Winokur's disorder, or Maryland depending on release. From the sole viewpoint of the protagonist, Vincent, it's a different stance taken on the typical bodyguard story. At the cost of plot, Winokur's disorder is driven by its slow buildups, hidden menaces, and the tense calm that takes up most of the duties a bodyguard experiences on their detail. Many themes are exhibited. Fear, paranoia, acclimation, awareness, attachment, classism, post-traumatic stress disorder, and the role sound has for our senses. Sound, second only to sight, is an important way we process things. It's the one thing plaguing Vincent's life after his time in Afghanistan. Suffering from hearing loss, nightmares, and other ailments preventing him from returning overseas, he's hooked up with a well-paying security job to keep him stable. In her own words, when Winokur wrote this story, she had one man in her mind as her Vincent, Matthias Schoenartz. The man's a beast of an actor. He put the win in Wincest for Red Sparrow, killed it with clown shoes in the drop, and was introduced to me for the first time in one of my favorite films ever, Rust and Bone. The mark of quality on his own, Schoenartz's mannerisms and reticence were correctly envisioned by Winokur. If only I could figure out how to say his name properly. Schoenartz. Schoenartz. Is how that is really how you pronounce his name? Schoenarts. Good to know. Matthias Schoenarts, of course. Our, yes. Of course, our Belgian Is that how I say it? Schoenarts? Schoenarts. Schoenarts. I've been, been saying Schoenarts. 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 And hi, I'm Matthias Schoenarts. Um, he doesn't even know how to say his name to he the people so they can, no. like, you know. Enunciate? Yeah. Oh, no, because of what, the Flemish way is absolutely not the uh, English way, so... The Flemish way is... Schoenarts. Wait, what is your... How would you pronounce your last um, name? Um, I don't know, Schoenarts or something? Ah, fuck it, whatever. So anyway, Vincent's a man who we come to know as very good at what he does. Someone we could see as a soldier in terms of upholding his duty, perception, and his physical attributes. But he's suffering. His backstory is not fleshed out, he's just a casualty of war unnoticed by society. Unlike other soldiers seen in the movie, limbless but able-minded, his fragile mental state keeps him aloof and alert. It's what makes him right for the job of protecting a high-valued businessman and his family. Instead of focusing on action, as easy as it would have been to go that route, it's Fonson's pain we see and hear, alien in his own country. To examine this, I'm not going to get into the OODA loop or anything since I feel that's far too structured and emphasized in military tactical design for common viewers. I can sum that up with a more fitting term in this case, street smarts. Or wait, I got a better one, awareness. If you have training and skills to respond to a situation, then total awareness is what you need to ensure that you can initiate that response efficiently. This means having an awareness of yourself and the situation around you. So much more goes into this since the mind and varying situations are far too complex to just apply some system to. We're doing this even if it's something we aren't consciously thinking of and categorizing. Yet these are the kinds of things that people who are involved in these types of fields have to be mindful of. This is Vincent's job. He is charged with the safety and security of a businessman's family. The family's at risk of being targeted by outside forces. That risk becomes a reality. This tension is at first minimal while security is abundant. As the situation changes, it falls on Vincent to remain at Maryland, Domaine Delecta in Antibes, France, with the wife Jesse and her child. Jesse, played by Diane Kruger, serves as both the ire and temptation of Vincent. 
Sociable, rich, and beautiful, she's the one thing he can and can't have. He has her attention and dependency, but not her affection. Women in general are put off by some aspect of Vincent's front. His towering stature, insomnia-steeled gaze, and tough outer shell are an intimidating wall he can't seem to shake. The irony here is that I've only ever heard Chouinard's co-stars praising his tenderness and amicability. It was terrible. Uh, no, I'm kidding. It's hard to imagine what he's like, you know, as soon as they call cut, he's just a total goofball. We were really not good for each other, but we got it done. Lovely. Wonderful. I adore him. Yeah? Yeah. As I said, I think he's also a really nice guy to, to yeah, know, yeah, he is. He's yeah. a sweetheart. Yeah. I'm leading to it, like be completely open. I trust him with my, like, I, I trust him 100%. And he's very strong, very powerful, but very sensitive at the same time. Yeah. And not competitive, like no. very generous, like so much love. So beautiful and so helpful for his role. Um, and he's just a sweet person. It was, it, was, it was really, really such a pleasure to work with him. No, he, he, he was, he's very, very easy to be around, very much so. He's very present. He does his homework. Um, he's, he's very animalistic side to him. Um, and he's a, he's a super generous partner. J'ai su que c'était lui parce que c'était une évidence, cette espèce de d'immense d'eau et euh, ce côté euh, animal. Euh, et puis il s'est retourné et j'ai vu ce garçon splendide avec ses, avec ses yeux qui raconte tellement de choses. <laughs> Elle est amoureuse. J'aimerais bien rencontrer. All right, I was trying to keep this serious, but this turned into a Matthias Gushfest. Back on point. Jesse, her son, and Vincent inevitably get closer as they're all forced to remain at the estate. One of the best defenses to a threat is not putting yourself in a crisis situation to begin with. Her initial ignorance to her family's situation is something a man like Vincent would know breaks the rules of safety. There's no main villain to disrupt their lives, no name to an enemy we should be aware of, but the knowledge that there are those out there that want to harm them. The film doesn't take a political stance, but you can't miss the tone this movie exudes. France's experience with terrorism is not new, but it has been amplified over the years with media, global tensions, and high-profile attacks. From political maneuverings and military involvement, as well as extremism that can come and go anywhere, the commoner suffers the most. The plot gives some details of deeper machinations of those Vincent has to protect. Not everyone is guilty, and there are a minor number of actors in this film to begin with. More so, the film itself answers some questions while leaving a lot unresolved. It's a small movie, establishing a world that in the beginning, like Vincent's mind, is held together but shaken. There are several techniques that a director can choose to illustrate this theme of order being disturbed. Winokur, having built this story off the traumatic experiences of others and herself, relied on sound. I feel one of the most underregarded aspects of a film by viewers is the sound design, editing, mixing, ambience, you name it. So much emphasis is placed on a movie's visuals, which is rightly so, but for something to have an impact on the way you hear it shouldn't be undervalued. Disorder's biggest strength is using its noises, beats, rings, distortion, and atmosphere to stimulate its audience's senses and add to the ambience of the film. Oftentimes, these are used as negatives. What Vincent hears in his head, what he suffers with every day. They're piercing, throbbing, and scratching away at him, a recurring disruption to his psyche. One particular scene early on while Vincent inspects the mansion is a mixture of a pulsating beat after the squelch of his earpiece. Another is the painful screech of tinnitus not letting him find some peaceful moment at the beach. Disorder dabbles with electronic music in parts, but the movie is mostly silent and foreboding. Silence itself is a design choice. Perfect example being a scene late in the film when Vincent's friend Denis is chatting with Jesse. There's a playful air around them, distilling the tension with an otherwise friendly conversation, music, and chemistry. They even go into flirtatious territory easily, to Vincent's displeasure. After he leaves, it's just the two of them putting up with each other and the dead air they're sharing. Holy shit have I been there before. Thinking I had anything to say but ended up with zilch. Kinda like now, I got nothing. So I'll end it. Not everyone's going to enjoy this simply for what it doesn't accomplish. 
If you want something action oriented then there are other movies for that. If you want a small budget home invasion movie then there are plenty of those too. Disorder is not obtuse. It had a vision shared by its director and lead actor. So I think it achieved what it wanted in its construction and performances. It's the story of a person afflicted by war and whether he can cope with it. The well-meaning message for trauma survivors is that they're not alone and that there is a place for them. For Vincent, world-weary and lost in noise, that may not be enough. <laughs>